We've come up to Nobles Hospital to see the handing over of these Lucas compression devices. Now, over £100,000 being raised by local charities and 13 of these being purchased. There'll be one on every ambulance and in the hospitals as well. And potentially, they could save loads of lives every year. And we're having a demonstration outside now of this new device. And we'll be uh, looking at these pictures as we have our chat here with uh, Russell. Very exciting, isn't it, to get this sort of equipment and so much of it? Absolutely. Uh, wonderful initiative and wonderfully supported um, by various charities over on the Isle of Man. So to have this, this new piece of kit, which is a cutting edge of, of CPR for our patients, is, is remarkable. And, and I think testament to the strength on the island we have of clubbing together and making something happen so quickly and so effectively. So, Russell, let's look at the uh, pictures we've just taken of uh, your reenactment and take us through what's going on. OK, what we're demonstrating is the importance of effective CPR. In 2010, new guidelines became apparent, and I'm sure everyone's seen the press with the likes of Vinnie Jones about harder and faster and the importance of effective chest compression in cardiac arrest. The reality is one person in the back of an emergency ambulance to perform effective chest compression is nigh on impossible. The Lucas device gives us that mechanical ability to be able to perform effective chest compression, which could you know, have a real tangible difference to the outcome of a patient in cardiac arrest. So to have this is an invaluable tool for our staff, not only from the patient's perspective, but also from the health and well-being of our staff, that they no longer will have to stand in the rear of an ambulance trying to do, and I stress trying to do effective CPR. This device takes that away, takes that issue away. They don't come cheap though, do they? They don't. Very, uh, very, very costly. Um, for the equipment that we're seeing here today, cost of that to run that program over five years is coming in about sort of 120,000 pound so yeah significant investment and the, the sort of interesting good news on this particular story is that this was funded outside of your budgets by the charities absolutely I mean I mean the present climate the, the harsh reality is much as we'd like to have every piece of cutting edge equipment for our ambulance crews the the, the, the financial uh, constraints are in at the moment that's not always possible what we did, um, my clinical supervisor Steve saw this, wanted to go with this and basically put together a lot of evidence and uh, had a meeting with a lot, a lot of charit charities here on the Isle of Man and clubbed together with half a dozen charities, particularly those ones that are friends or supporting either nobles or the League of Friends up in Ramsey and also the Manx branch of the British Heart Foundation. So everyone clubbing together, doing their bit has enabled this to happen. You wanted 100,000, you got more. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> How about that? That's amazing. Absolutely. To get more than you asked for in the present climate is, yeah. is, is something of an achievement. But again, testament of what can be achieved in a small jurisdiction mm. where everyone pulls together. And it's been fantastic. 13 sounds quite a lot, but where, where will they exactly go then? Okay, we need 13. Um, they're basically going in three, three locations, uh, uh, essentially. Ramsey Cottage Hospital, Nobles A&E, and also in every frontline ambulance. Okay, so basically, if, if, if you're unfortunate enough to, to become the victim of a cardiac arrest, the frontline ambulance, there would be one on every frontline vehicle, and also within the, potentially the receiving areas of hospital, i.e. Ramsey or Nobles. How many people will this possibly save in, in a year? It's difficult to tell. I mean, one of the things we are doing now, we're, we're, we're much more proactive in actually collecting that data. In terms of patient outcome, in terms of people actually walking out of hospital to discharge, we will see. But what we do know is that this device delivers CPR in the most effective way. Therefore, what we're doing from the moment people arrest is giving them the best possible chance. And I think that's, that, that, that's the crux of this, is giving people the best opportunity.